Pastor Walker, I ain't going to be before you long. Okay. Prayfully. <laughs> but tonight, just want to re remind you, this ain't going to be one of them shouting messages and stuff like that. Just want to equip you, if possible, mm -hmm. or bring something back to your remembrance. Because we're living in a time where there's no shortage of someone preaching, mm -hmm. teaching, prophesizing, criticizing, or flat out lying. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I'm old enough to remember the internet was once coined as the information highway. Mm -hmm. And there's no shortage of information on anything that you desire to know. Mm -hmm. But the problem is especially when it comes to the household of faith. Mm -hmm. There are so many people saying so many different things. Mm -hmm. This person criticizing that person. If this person do something in their church, somebody criticizing that ain't God and all this other stuff going on. Mm -hmm. And the problem has become is the world is seeing that as well. Mm -hmm. So now the church looks like it's a hot mess which it once was the standard bearer. Yeah. But we look like we have no standard. Mm -hmm. Because this person saying this, this person is a, going against that person, and then this person here is going against God all complete, mm -hmm. all in the name of Jesus, mm -hmm. in the name of love, because mm -hmm. God is love. Mm -hmm. And so people have abused and misused the Bible to push their own viewpoint, mm -hmm. to push their own agenda. See, if I can give you the word, but mix it in a lie, I got you. Mm -hmm. Because sometimes I sit and wonder why do lies last so long? If the lie is told long enough mm -hmm. and enough times, mm -hmm. but from people mm -hmm. that are in respected positions, it'll take hold. Mm -hmm. Y'all don't believe me, huh? For instance, slavery was once justified because somebody said we were slaves because of the curse of Ham. Because ham name means hot or black. So they assume because they, they took that black mm -hmm. and that Noah said that you'll be a servant to your brothers. Well, if he's black, wouldn't that make his brothers black too? Mm -hmm. yeah. I'm just saying. Just a little bit of common sense on that. But if the preacher is telling you something because he's getting his pockets lined, <laughs> mm -hmm. and the people don't know how to read for themselves, they are trusting that person with the truth. Mm -hmm. And it's no different today. Mm -hmm. You got people who are trusting wolves mm -hmm. in sheep clothing. Right, because Noah never cursed Ham. Mm -hmm. That's a lie. He cursed his son, the baby son, Canaan. So the whole foundation was wrong. But there are people today still believe it. Because they haven't read the word for themselves. Because in Genesis 9.25 it says, and he said, curse be Canaan. Did that say ham? That sound like ham? Nope. <laughs> a servant of servant shall he be unto his brethren. They ain't got nothing to do with ham. He called Noah couldn't curse ham. You know why he couldn't curse ham? Because God had blessed him. In the first verse. You can't curse what God has blessed. So when somebody say they're putting a hex on you, don't you believe that foolishness? Amen. It only works when you believe it. Mm 
But when you know God has put his hands on you, they can say whatever they want to say. It ain't no voodoo doctor, no witch doctor. I don't care who it is. Can't do nothing to you unless God allow it. How many of y'all heard this one? Money is the root of all evil. Y'all heard that? That's a lie. But where it come from? Somebody from a pulpit said something crazy. And it was, people ran with it. Hmm. First Timothy 6 and 10 says, For the love of money is the root of all evil. It's the love. Mm -hmm. It's not money. Money is a tool. Mm -hmm. right. A medium of exchange. Mm -hmm. right. But if you don't know the word, you'll run with it. Mm -hmm. How about this one? Try the spirit by the spirit. Mm -hmm. Y'all heard that one? Yeah. People quick to quote it but they're quoting it wrong. Because what it says in 1 John 4 and 1, Beloved, believe not every spirit, but try the spirits whether they are of God. And they stop right there. Because you'll understand the spirits in which he's referring to if you just keep on reading. Because many false prophets are going out into the world. And we have no shortage of prophets today That's right. saying all kind of stuff. And people are sucking it up. So who can you trust? When you go to a church, what are you looking for? Because many people aren't led by his spirit. Mm -hmm. They're led by their, feel their feelings. They're led by their denominational affiliations. Mm -hmm. Many people are sitting in the wrong church today mm -hmm. because they won't let loose of their title mm -hmm. or their position. Mm -hmm. And they're wondering why they ain't seeing the fullness and blessings of God. Because they done got attached. Mm -hmm. That title has given them a meaning. They feel that now they are justified. Because just being a disciple of Christ ain't good enough for some. That's why it's important to not just take people's word for it. Just because you like their style of preaching and teaching. Because people will, are quick to say, say amen to that. Right? Mm -hmm. What you ain't say amen to? You ain't said nothing. Mm -hmm. You just gave a statement. Mm -hmm. And you put a little oomph on it. But it has no substance. But you want me to say amen? For what? Because I can't go and agree to fit your ego. Amen. Real talk now tonight. Because it's time out for all the church buffoonery. Mm -hmm. And it's time out for all the sheep being led astray because of what they don't know. Amen. Now, the Bible says, my people are destroyed for a lack of knowledge. Does it not say that? Mm -hmm. But here's the problem with that. There is no lack of knowledge. Mm -hmm. Everything you need is available to you. Because thou hast rejected knowledge, that's the key. You're rejecting the knowledge that's available to you. Many folks, how can I put it? They want a fresh word. They're constantly looking for a fresh word. Constantly looking for something new. But they ain't done the old thing God told them to do. What they're really saying is, I need something new to fit my fancy, to make me feel good at this moment, mm -hmm. instead of doing what the Lord told me to do a year or two ago. Right. 
We have to be honest with ourselves. So, how do you prevent yourself from being taken advantage of? I'm going to give you the answer on that. Y'all right? Is that all right? Turn to Acts 17. The subject on tonight is back to basics. Because if you listen to apostle and senior pastor, the main thing they harp on is prayer. They may slide in fasting. They may slide in praise and worship. But you're going to always get the cornerstone of a thing, which is prayer. Right? But there's other things to the basics than prayer. Now, in Acts 17, starting at the 10th verse, prior to that, Paul and Silas are in Thessalonica. And they teach it in the synagogues, doing what they do. But then some Jews got in their feelings. Because they ain't like what Paul was saying. Because we can talk about the word all day. But when you start challenging my core beliefs, I'm going to have a problem. Ain't nothing changed today. That's why you can't argue with people. You listen to folks. Because when you listen to them, they start telling you their core belief. For instance, there are some people who believe that police are killing black folks at an exponential amount. Right? That's what, cause that's what the media shows us. That's all you see. A cop killing a black man. It look unjustified. But when you present them with the facts, that it's actually white people get killed more than black people. That goes against somebody's agenda. Because if they told the truth of a thing, now you got... White folks, black folks coming together to find out why are our police so untrained? Because if I can keep y'all separated, I can keep the power. But if y'all unite, y'all threatening what I have established. There's a game being played. And some folks are playing chess while many folks are playing checkers. So we pick it up in verse 17. So they had to leave because these Jews went and got the lesser Jews. That's what the words say. The lower folk. People who get riled up without thinking objectively. That'll get emotional. That'll believe a lie real quick. Mm -hmm. So now they go on to Berea. That's where they at now. And you don't hear about the Bereans too much. I don't think I've ever really heard nobody talk about the the Bereans. Mm -hmm. But we should Mm -hmm. take notes from the Bereans for what they did. Verse 17 and 10 it reads, And the brethren immediately sent away Paul and Silas by night unto Berea. And coming thither, went into the synagogue of the Jews. Verse 11, which can be our key verse. These were more noble than those in Thessalonica, in that they received the word with all readiness of mind and searched the scriptures daily, whether those things were so. Therefore, many of them believed, also of honorable women, which were, which were Greeks, and of men, not a few. But when the Jews of Thessalonica had knowledge that the word of God was preached of Paul at Berea, they came thither also and stirred up the people. Let's back it up to verse 11. These were more noble than those in Thessalonica. See, the Bereans were more open-minded people. They weren't stuck in their religion and or their doctrine. They listened open-mindedly 
And then they took what you said and went back and studied it for themselves to make sure that it lined up. Because you can say a lot of things from the pulpit. You may miss some stuff. But if you down there write notes and then you go back and study those notes, you will find out if that person was in error or they were telling the truth. You may find yourself in studying the word of God. You may have to change some of your core beliefs. Because as believers of Christ, we have to change to fit him, not him change to fit us. So we can't go by the world motto of follow your heart. That's what the world tell you to do. Just follow your heart. But our word says lean not unto your own understanding. What's wrong with my heart? Because it's deceitful and wicked. <laughs> so I got to trust him. When I can't trust myself. So I got to go against what the world say. I got to go against how I feel when I study his word. But many people don't study because they think that's a get out of jail free call. I can't be judged by what I don't know. Baby, you still gonna get judged because you got access to knowing. They say like this, we all in Georgia, right? Georgia has its own set of rules and laws on the books. But if we go to South Carolina, we got to follow the laws of South Carolina, not Georgia. What you may get away with in Georgia, you can't do in South Carolina. But when you get in South Carolina and you did what you did in Georgia and they bust you, guess what they can say? It, ain't, it don't matter that you didn't know. Before you came, you should have found out. Ignorance of the law is no excuse. There are a lot of people got locked up because they drove across state lines thinking they can do what they did in their home state. Some states don't play like that. So you have to know if you carry your weapon. Can you carry your weapon in that state? Because if you can't and you get pulled over, they can confiscate the weapon or take you to jail. One of the two. Uh-oh, sound like somebody breaking the law. <laughs> so they received the word with all readiness of mind. And search the scriptures, how often? Daily. Daily. They, they didn't wait to Sunday. They didn't wait to Tuesday to open their Bible for Bible study. They didn't wait to Friday night to open up their Bible. But a lot of people do. When you're not in the house of God, you're still the temple of God. So you still have to study. But there are some benefits or some side effects to studying. I know what side effects are. You got a headache. You can take this pill to take care of that headache. But it may cause diarrhea, nausea, insomnia. You may experience hallucinations. May cause death. Mm -hmm. But you can take this pill and get rid of a headache. Mm -hmm. You may die in the process, but you won't have a headache no more. <laughs> Pick your poison. <laughs> but that's where we are. So what are some of these benefits? These are in no particular order. You will begin to have confidence in the word. The more you study, the more confidence you will attain. Mm -hmm. First Peter 3 and 15 says, But sanctify the Lord God in your hearts, and be ready always to give an answer to every man that asketh you a reason of the hope that is in you with meekness and fear. Most people don't want to talk about Christ because they don't 
fear they don't know enough. But you're supposed to talk about what he's done for you, one. But then you should have enough knowledge of his word so you can help somebody else in their situation. It's time out for you to pass the potato. Well, you know, I don't know, but let me see. I, I, you can go to talk to my apostle. They're talking to you. You supposed, God brought them to you. But when you find yourself with an inability to help somebody, that should let you know, ding, 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 I need to get rid of my word. I just, I'm failing. Yes, we are helpers of one another, but you, you are a helper as well. Cause watch this. Y'all, 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 y'all ready for this one? Second Timothy 2 and 15, study to show thyself approved unto God, a workman that needeth not to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. That word study is not talking about reading. When you, you do a study of the word. The new, the new English translation gives the actual definition of that word study. It says, make every effort to present yourself before God as a proven worker who does not need to be ashamed teaching the message of truth accurately. What you say? You are to teach the word of truth. Mm -hmm. He ain't talking to just the preacher. All right. He talking to those who call themselves Christians. Mm -hmm. You have a responsibility to tell people about this gospel. Mm -hmm. But it's hard to tell what you don't know when you can only tell what the preacher said. But you haven't spent enough time learning what the word said itself. Amen. Amen. Another side effect. If you struggle with reading, you will become a stronger reader. Y'all know that? I remember when I was, uh, I had to take the SAT because I was putting in my uh, physician assistant, assistant uh, packet when I was in the Army. And so that was one of the requirements. And so going through all the vocabulary stuff and math stuff. And so the teacher asked me, she came up to me, this short white lady. She was like, excuse me, do you do a lot of reading? I'm like, nah. And she looked puzzled. And she, and she had a paper in her hand. And she's like, you sure you want to do a lot of reading? I'm like, no. Nah. She's like, what do you do? I said, I watch a lot of TV. And she's like, no, you can't just watch a lot of TV because your vocabulary is too high. Your knowledge of English is too great for you to just watch TV all the time. And I said, oh, I studied the Bible. And she hadn't, she couldn't believe it. Because I don't take what I see as face value. Because I understand that this is a Middle Eastern book. And we are Western civilization. So what they said it meant, maybe I may interpret it differently because of where I'm from. So I don't take words for granted. A simple dictionary will blow your mind. That's it. But I didn't know the side effect was my vocabulary was expanding. Amen. Studying has purpose. Mm -hmm. It has benefits. Yes. Now, I know some people, well, I'll be struggling. You don't have to read the King James. Read one of the other ones. Because I struggled with the these and thou's. That was, I'll tell y'all this. 
we was, uh, I think I was going to JRTC, and I had a little pocket Bible. And I was reading it. You know, I'm newly saved. And I got so frustrated, I put it down. I like, Lord, now I'm on a bus, so I, I can't just say it out loud. So I'm praying with me. I said, Lord, I don't understand none of this. You're going to have to help me read this in regular English, or I ain't reading it no more. So I'm on the bus. I'm trying to take a nap. Next thing I know, I hear this voice says, pick it up and read it. I open up the Bible. I read it. You know, just like reading it regular English. I was so happy, I had a sneaker shop. <laughs> because his word is important, and he don't want his people confused. Most people quit because they don't understand it. But it's like this. If you're hungry... I mean, like, when you're really hungry, you will do whatever it takes to go find some food. Because you're going to satisfy that urge. And you can eat something, and if it ain't the right thing, you're going to eat, you're going to look for something else. Because that just wasn't it. It's the same way with the word. If there's no hunger for it, you ain't going to read it. You're not going to study with purpose or intensity. And so you have to develop that taste, that love, that intensity that you would if you were searching for something deep. Another benefit or side effect from studying God's word, it will increase your faith. Joshua 1 and 8 said, This book of the law shall not depart out of thy mouth, but thou shalt meditate therein day and night, that thou mayest observe to do according to all that is written therein. For then thou shalt make thy way prosperous, and then thou shalt have good success. That word meditate means memorize. But it also means in the Hebrew to imagine, mutter, speak, talk, Utter. So when you're studying this word, just open it up here. Mm -hmm. I would open it up to all these sons with these crazy names. All right. Now I'm in my house. Mm -hmm. Just me. So if I struggle with reading or reading out loud, why am I ashamed when it's just me? Right? Mm -hmm. So now when I'm reading it, wine is a marker, strong drink is raging, and whosoever is deceived thereby is not wise. Wine is a marker. Okay, so now I'm going to look up marker. What is a marker? To find out what it really means. Mm -hmm. I know what wine is. Strong drink is raging. Uh-oh, strong drink. What? So there's level to this thing. Wine. Henny, gin, E and J, strong drink, right? Strong drink. And whosoever is deceived thereby is not wise. So that mean that let me know that I got to be careful about this alcohol. Even though the world says on every commercial, everybody having a good time drinking alcohol. But the commercial never showed nobody drunk. Them commercials never show nobody beating their, their significant other because they got too much to drink. Because they can't handle their liquor. Mm -hmm. Them commercials, those same alcohol commercials don't show the drunk driver. Mm -hmm. They only portray the image of, if you want to have fun, get lit. Mm -hmm. And people suck it up. Yeah. But if I study this word long enough... On the things that I'm going through, I may find myself acting differently or responding differently. Case in point, back when I was a, a soldier, long, long, many moon ago, we had to carry what was called a smart book. 
in that smart book, I don't know if y'all old heads have one. <laughs> it had all the tasks you're supposed to be able to accomplish before you graduate basic in AIT. And whenever you wasn't doing nothing actively, you had to read that smart book. But the thing is, the more you read it, the more you start, halt who goes there. You may find yourself putting your hands up because it had pictures. It had pictures by it. <laughs> well, just words. You start imagining, getting in your mind, what you're reading. So when it's time to do it, you're starting to do what you don't read. It's the same way with the word. The more you read it, you will start to imagine yourself doing it. So when the opportunity come or the situation presents itself, you will respond based off what you read. But if you never take the time to study, it can't change you. You be walking around half hood and half holy. Instead of the, the church should stay once hood, now holy. But that just let me know you're still in the flesh. But they sanctify ourselves. Whoever came up with that phrase, they made a good little penny off of it. So now when you study and you're talking to yourself, what you're reading, you're fulfilling Romans 10 and 17. So then faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. You are hearing your voice say the word. See, it's one thing to hear apostle's voice. It's one thing to hear seeing your pastor's voice. It's one thing to hear my voice or somebody else's voice. But it ain't nothing like hearing your voice. Your voice feeding your spirit. Another side effect is a deeper relationship with the Holy Spirit. John 14 26, by the comfort, but the comforter, which is the Holy Ghost, whom the Father will send in my name, shall teach you all things and bring all things to your remembrance, whatsoever I have said unto you. It's hard for the Holy Ghost to bring something to your remembrance if it ain't nothing there. You got to pull from something. And if you're only in church on Sunday, that ain't much to pull from. Because you got to ask yourself, when you dare, are you writing notes? Or when you leave, do you go back and listen to what you heard? Or is I got it? Because affliction and persecution will come for what you heard. And it's not going to take long. But some people don't need affliction and persecution. All they need is a meal. They just need something to distract them. Mm -hmm. So they can forget what they heard. So they can't meditate on it no more. And it can't take root in you. So it's important to write notes. Go back and study. What did he say again about this? What can I do? What do I, what do you say I need to do? Go back. You can't wait for it. Well, I just wait. Maybe you say it again next Sunday. That's wrong. <laughs> you playing with fire at that point. Now watch this. Another. And this is the last side effect. This ain't all the side effects, but it's the last one. Peace. In this world, with everything going on, peace sometimes seems to be in short supply. Kids acting up, spouses acting up, co-workers acting up, you acting up. Everybody is acting up. And sometimes we need a little bit of Peace. And so what we'll end up doing is withdrawing ourselves 
thinking that we're protecting ourselves to get peace. Thank you, Holy Ghost. Let me put this out there. The church has never hurt anybody. But y'all know people say they're giving church hurt, right? The church has never hurt anybody. Tears in the organization have hurt a lot of folks. But the true church ain't hurt nobody. The true church has offended folks because they stood for righteousness. But they ain't never hurt nobody. There's a difference. But people think that because they come into the building that the church hurt them. It wasn't the church. It was a few knuckleheads in the building. They exposed themselves. But what they really exposed was your lack of commitment to the God you say you love. Because once you understand him and you understand his people, can't nobody hurt you. Because last time I checked, love your enemies. <laughs> Thank you, senior pastor. But we want to run every time somebody says something we don't like. Now, I ain't mean talking about the messy folks. I'm talking about also the ones who don't want to be corrected. They want to go to heaven being hellish. That's all kind of crazy. They think they're going to get the hookup. My mama was, my grandma, she was on the, usher, she was on the mother's board. Or they think because I got Psalm 23 tattooed on my shoulder, that's going to be a ticket into heaven. I got a cross around my neck signifying, Jesus never said wear a cross, he said bear it. So when you bear the cross, that means there's going to be some pain, there's going to be some affliction, there's going to be some persecution. This ain't no easy walk. Everybody ain't built for this. This wall, here's going to have you disappointed a lot. The true walk. But in that walk, in all that disappointment, you have peace. You will have joy unspeakable joy. That's right. You will have a right mind. But the question is, will you let go? Will you study like you're supposed to? Mm -hmm. I ain't say just read. Mm -hmm. I say take the time to really study. Amen. <laughs> Real study. Get you a study partner mm -hmm. to study. Help hold you accountable. To study. You have to want this thing. That's it. You, gotta want it. you have to want it. Want it's it. like somebody saying they want to be wealthy. You cannot be wealthy listening to rich people. There's a difference. That's a totally different mindset. Mm -hmm. A lot of people are rich, but they're not wealthy. Mm -hmm. I'm closing with this. On YouTube, you'll see a lot of things that says, you know, social media. Secrets of the wealthy, they don't want you to know. Y'all seen that? Ever seen that? That's just clickbait. Because every secret that the wealthy know is in a book. You know what they said about us, right? If you want to hide something from us, put it in the book. When you listen to wealthy people, they tell you what to read. Rich people tell you what to buy. Because <laughs> they understand there has to be a transformation of the mind to become wealthy. It's a new mindset you got to have. Be ye transformed. The world know this. Be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind. You have to study his word. 
so you can be transformed. No more being tossed to and fro. No more doubting your faith. No more thinking that I can't do it. When the word says you can do all things through Christ who strengthens you. But if you don't spend no time in his word because you're too busy. You got all these things going on. That's taking you from the thing that you need. Why are you complaining? This is a hard, but it's ne it's necessary. We've been looking for all this stuff. Lord, gonna bless me with this. Lord, gonna bless me with that. And we're still waiting. Me and we're still waiting. We're wondering why. Where is it at, Lord? That's why a lot of people don't even come to church. Because of the testimonies of, they heard of other folks. And they died without seeing what God said. They was going to do in their life. So they, don't, so they believe God ain't real. Not understanding or taking the time to figure out what they didn't do. A lot of people believe in God for stuff, but what did he say? What are you standing on? Is this promise rooted from the desires of your heart or his for you? There's a difference. Certain things aren't hard to get. Some things are. question is, do you really want it? Because if you really want it, you will seek after it. You will talk to the ones who got it. What did you do? But it's time out for believers doing stuff on their own. I ain't going to ask Deacon Kennedy. I just do it myself. That's pride talk. We all got to humble ourselves. Ask for help when we need help. I may not have the answer, but I may know someone who do. But you will never know if you ask. Don't ask. I want the best for all God's people. I really do. And I'm getting so agitated at all the stuff that I'm seeing. I told Apostle that I'll try to be nice tonight. But because I'm so frustrated. When he asked me what's going on, I'm all right. But I'm frustrated. I'm frustrated from what I see. I'm frustrated from what I'm hearing. It's just like a mess. When the answer is right here. And I am so surprised at how many people are got so comfortable with lying on God using the Bible. People are comfortable with lying as long as they can get your support. They can get you to subscribe to their channel. Like my video. I tell you whatever you want to hear. I prophesy to you all day. Because desperation leads to deception. When you're desperate, you will believe anything. That's why we're supposed to be content in all things. But if you never study your word, you will never learn about contentment. You never study your word. You'll never really understand about prayer, how to pray, what to believe for, what not to believe for. What is his will? If you're not in his word like you're supposed to be, you'll be clueless. 
being rocked to and fro. This is the last thing I promise you. I share this with Apostle. He was coming back from Savannah. He was listening to Pastor Walker. And Pastor Walker messed around and said, some people are in your life for a season. He said that several times. So people are in your life for a season. And I told Apostle, I said, many people marry seasonal folks. And they wonder why they miserable in their marriage. They married the wrong person. Because they thought that person was the one. But they was only there to get them through a particular season. Young folks, be careful. Don't get out of season. If you find somebody there and they're getting you on the right path, stay on that path. If they go out your life, let them go. But if they come back around, now it may be, you may can take pay attention. But if you ain't where you're supposed to be at, seasonal folks, don't, don't be so quick to get in a relationship with somebody there who's just there to help you. I married a seasonal person. I went through some stuff. I went through some stuff. But because I studied his word, it got me through it. It changed me. So I wasn't bitter at her. I learned to love her because she became my enemy. Love your enemies. Do good to them who despitefully use you. Had I not studied, had I not transformed my mind and my heart, I couldn't have been the man I became. So then God gave me the woman that I probably should have had a long time ago, but I was hard-headed. <laughs> but now I'm in a position to where can't no other woman do what she can do. She got me. Even though she can be stubborn sometimes, that's my baby there. Like I said, you can do whatever you want to me. But if you mess with my baby, you're going to meet Jesus. Psalm 144, that's Bible. <laughs> Study the word. A lot of things you're facing in life, it's right here in this word. It's there. But you have to study. 